Hey guys, it's Adrian or BHA here bringing you a new video. So the great folks over at Maros, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, sent me over uh, some of their smart switches to show you guys. Now these are their Wi-Fi HomeKit version smart switches. This is the uh, MS510, which is a single pole switch, as well as the MS550, which is their uh, three-way uh, version. Now both of these should work great and they will integrate seamlessly uh, right into HomeKit. Uh, so we should be able to add them using the Meros app. Uh, and then of course that will pull them into HomeKit as well. So if you're looking for smart switches and you're immersed in the Apple uh, ecosystem, then these switches are definitely worth taking a look at. So without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so you can pick these things up straight from Amazon on the uh, Maros storefront. Uh, depending on which one you want, the uh, single pole version is about eh, $16, $17. And you can usually get a pretty decent deal if you buy them in bulk. Like if they have a two pack, which is a little bit more. The same goes for their three way uh, switch. The three way switch is about $25, $26 on their Amazon storefront. But if you're willing to buy them in a two pack, uh, then you could potentially get them for under 20 bucks a piece. So that's a pretty good deal. Definitely worth taking a look at. And like I always say on Amazon, if you're interested in a product, watch it for a few days, wait for those coupons to drop because those come in and out uh, of the storefronts all the time. Definitely worth picking up when you can get that coupon with it. But like I said, we're gonna get these integrated into HomeKit as well as we're gonna attempt to use the HomeKit device integration as well. Uh, with Home Assistant and get them added into Home Assistant as well. Let's get started. Okay, let's get this switch opened up here. Uh, so this box is pretty small, uh, so there isn't going to be a whole lot that comes with it. Uh, but you can see on the outside of the box, they got all the information uh, kind of talking about uh, the switch itself. So this is the MS510, which is the single pole switch. Uh, so if we slide this cover off here, right there on top is the uh, switch itself. And these are kind of nice because they actually have the wires already built into them. So uh, you just kind of use wire nuts to connect everything up, makes it pretty easy. And just to show you the difference between the uh, single pole version and the three-way version of the switch, uh, up in the corner, I have the MS550, which is the three-way version of the switch. Basically the same, other than it has one additional traveler wire there. Uh, so you can see the number of wires. There's just one extra wire hanging off the back of that. But let's see what else we got here in the box. It uh, looks like we get labels for the wires. So if you wanted to do that uh, to help kind of keep everything nice and clean and inside your box, you could label each of the wires so you know what they are. Uh, we have a little package here that has instruction manuals as well as the mounting screws for the switch and all of the wire nuts for each of the wires. But other than that, lastly, there is a wall plate there at the very bottom of that box. Now this is a standard Decora style switch. Uh, so if you're using it in a multi-gang box like I am, you can still use a standard two-gang uh, Decora switch plate uh, and it will work just fine. But that's pretty much everything that comes in the box. Uh, I'll show you up in the corner there. Again, this is the uh, contents of the three-way switch uh, box and it's pretty much identical. Uh, the same uh, stuff that came in this one came in that one as well. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to the next step and we will get this thing installed. So the plan is to install the switch in my daughter's room. So it will be replacing an old Tessin Tuya switch uh, that has really started giving me problems. Uh, it continues to drop its Wi-Fi connection. No matter what I do in the settings, it always manages uh, to toggle the switch when it comes back online. This causes my daughter's lights to switch on and off all the time. Now, I didn't get a good shot of the full install here, but just to give you an idea of how the switch is installed, here is the diagram from Maros website on uh, installation instructions. 
Now for me, I'm using this switch in somewhat of a special function. Uh, I use it to turn my daughter's LEDs on and off in her room and those LEDs are controlled by a smart Wi-Fi controller already. So basically I'm gonna power the switch, uh, but I'm not gonna have it attached to anything. So we won't be using the load wire here. We're just gonna cap that off. And I'll use automations to toggle the LEDs on and off when the button is pushed on the switch. So like I said, this is the single pole installation and what that would look like. But if you were gonna use the MS550, uh, which is their three-way switch version, this is the diagram that kind of shows you how that would be installed. So basically you would be replacing the standard three-way switch in your wall with this three-way smart switch. Uh, and it would pretty much wire up the same way. It's got the traveler wires and the live wire as well. It's a pretty standard install for other smart three-way switches that I've seen. Nonetheless, uh, you can see I have the new switch put in the wall here and it was a pretty easy to just kind of uh, use the provided wire nuts to kind of wire everything together. And then in this last clip, I have the power turned back on and you can see the little indicator light there on the front of the switch showing that it does have power. And like I said, this switch is gonna be used to kind of turn my uh, daughter's LED lights on and off uh, that you can see here. So um, we have the switch installed. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next step and we're gonna get it added into HomeKit. Okay, uh, as most of you probably already know, uh, Apple does a pretty good job of making it uh, easy to add new devices into HomeKit. Uh, so all we have to do here is hit the plus in the top corner, and then we're going to uh, scan the QR code for the device. Now, if you can't see the QR code or you just wanna type in the code manually, you can do that here as well, uh, which is actually what I'm gonna do. Uh, so we're going to hit more options uh, kind of at the top there just above uh, the little camera screen and if the device is in pairing mode which it should be since we just powered it on and it's never been connected before then HomeKit should see it almost immediately and you can see it listed there at the top uh, so we can just select that now it asks us to add the HomeKit code here so we can just type it uh, it should be listed somewhere on the device uh, on these, it's right on the uh, back side there. And then we'll give it a little bit to uh, get connected. And boom, now it wants us to choose uh, a location. So I'm going to choose Allie's room, which is the location. And I kind of already have it defined there, so uh, it makes it simple. Uh, let's give it a name here as well. I'm gonna call it Allie's LED switch, uh, since that's kind of uh, what it's used for. Now it says I can choose how it is displayed. Uh, so this is essentially gonna be a light switch. So I'm gonna choose light here. And boom, simple as that. We now have it added into HomeKit. And if that's all you were going to do with it, uh, then you basically could stop right here in the video. You don't have to go any further. Uh, but if you were looking to get it into Home Assistant, which is what I want to do, uh, then follow along with me to the next step and we'll do a quick run through of that as well. All right, so adding HomeKit devices into Home Assistant can be a little tricky. Uh, there are a few different ways uh, to do it depending on the type of HomeKit devices that you are adding. Uh, so these switches are on Wi-Fi. So the easiest way to get these switches into Home Assistant uh, is to basically add them to HomeKit first. This will put them on your local network. And once you do that, you can basically then go into HomeKit and remove the device uh, from HomeKit. And that's it. Uh, when you do that, it will leave those switches on your local network but also put them in pairing mode. This will basically allow them then to be added into Home Assistant. And adding it into Home Assistant should work about the same as adding it into HomeKit. A Home Assistant will see those devices on your local network once they're in pairing mode, and you will be able to add them 
using that same HomeKit code just like we did earlier when adding them into HomeKit. And as you can see here, I can go into the HomeKit integration in Home Assistant. And there is the switch that we just added. Uh, you can see it shows it is a Maros MS510 switch. Uh, and we have the standard functionality that you see with most smart switches uh, in Home Assistant. Um, and you know, we can flip it on and off. Everything works as expected. And if you want these switches to then also be used in HomeKit so that you basically use it in Home Assistant and HomeKit, uh, you will use the HomeKit controller integration and basically send them back across the bridge uh, into HomeKit. And that's how you'll be able to use them both in Home Assistant and HomeKit simultaneously. Now I mentioned earlier that I'm using this switch in a bit of a different way since I use it uh, to control another smart device, uh, my daughter's LEDs on, uh, that are also on my network. And I make this work by using a Home Assistant automation. Uh, so basically anytime the switch is toggled, uh, it will toggle the power to my daughter's LED lights in her room. If I push the button and the lights are turned on, uh, then obviously the lights will turn off and vice versa. But it works great. Haven't had any issues with it uh, since it was installed. Uh, it's working much better than the uh, Tuya switch that I had in there previously. Uh, so we're no more ghost switching happening or anything like that. Um, so overall, I think it was a success. So let's move on to that last step and I will give you my final thoughts. All right, so there are tons of different types of smart switches on the market right now, from Zigbee uh, to Z-Way to Matter thread switches. Uh, there's obviously Tuya, Wi-Fi switches, as well as these HomeKit switches like we saw here. Uh, so anything under 20 bucks, I think, is a pretty good deal, uh, depending on um, if you're using just a regular single pole switch. You might pay a little bit more if you're looking for three-way capable switches, but uh, still around $20 is about the going rate. I think Meros does a really good job with these switches. I've been very pleased with how responsive they are, even going between Home Assistant and Home Kit. I think they work very well. I haven't had any issues as of late. I'll have a link to Meros's website as well as their Amazon storefront in the description below. If you aren't interested in these particular switches, head over there and see what other things they have to offer. I guarantee you will find something that you do like. As always, I want to thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me A Coffee link. Every little bit helps. If you haven't had a chance, head over to my spring merchandise page and check out all the Burns Home Automation merchandise. And if you're looking for the latest smart home gear, you're going to want to check out Smonet. I'll have a link in the description below. Head over there and see what deals they currently have running. If you're looking for the latest smart window treatment, you're going to want to check out Smart Wings. I'll have a link in the description below for them as well. Head over there and see what deals they currently have running. If you're interested in buying and selling stock or maybe cryptocurrency, you're going to want to check out Robinhood. I'll have a link in the description below. If you sign up with that link, you and I both will get a free share of stock. It's a win-win for both of us. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you'd like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around.